Hello, my name is John David Powell, and this is Discovery, the research section of Graffiti, the electronic newsletter of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Houston. Irving Rothman is a professor of English at the University of Houston. He received his Ph.D. in English and American Literature from the University of Pittsburgh in 1967, and later that year he joined our English faculty. Professor Rothman is a specialist in the works of Daniel Defoe, and he conducts research in restoration and 18th century English literature and in neoclassical patterns in early American literature. He also is a specialist in technical and professional writing, and he is the editor for the Institute for Space Systems Operations. Irving Rothman also is the editor of The Barber in Modern Jewish Culture, published this year by the Edwin Mellon Press, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Graffiti. I guess the big question, the first question is, um, how did you do a book on the barber and modern Jewish culture? Of all the things, you I mean, you're an expert on Defoe, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and we, do, we do the barber series. Well, I, I've been collecting stories, poems, articles, features about barbers since 1990. I have about 600 of them that I've published in bibliographies in a book called The Bulletin of Bibliography. You can do a lot of books about barbers. You can do a collection of Nobel Prize winners on bar and their barbers. You can do a book on great writers and their barbers. You can do an anthology of barbers who murder customers in the barber chairs. Each one can be a collection of essays or stories on its own. I chose to do the barber in modern Jewish culture because it relates to some very important events about history, the recent past, and the Holocaust, and it becomes a very meaningful set of essays. Well, this takes us from probably the, the most famous clip job, uh, Samson and Delilah. Exactly. And, and brings us up today, uh, I think you even did a piece on uh, Sweeney Todd. Right, right, right. Sweeney Todd we did because Sondheim, the, the book is stories about Jewish barbers, stories by Jews about barbers, and uh, stories that have barbers featured as an important part of them. The, uh, these stories go back quite a distance. Plutarch, for example, speaks about three types of barbers. One was executed by the emperor for maligning Dionysius. Mm -hmm. Another was put on the rack for speaking out in his barber shop and blaming uh, the Romans for a certain war. When the barber asks the emperor Archelaus how he wants his hair cut, the emperor replies, in silence. Mm -hmm. Because barbers are very garrulous, mm -hmm. and they actually are meeting places in many countries. For example, when the Taliban collapsed in Afghanistan, the uh, poets who were not allowed to speak out and not allowed to write gathered in the barbershop to write their poetry, uh, to read their poetry. Mm -hmm. There are many, many instances where the we know the barber is actually the center of the community. We don't see barbers so much in the big cities as you do in the small cities. Is this a you know, declining profession, or, or are, we, are we losing something because we now go to stylists or beauticians to get haircuts? Well, I, I read a paper, I read an article in the paper the other day, where someone was complaining that young men don't go into barbering anymore, that it is being turned over to hairstylists. But there are plenty of barbers in this city and plenty of barbershops that will continue. The uh, barbers took a big hit years ago when Gillette Razor produced their safety razor. Mm -hmm. Most people shaved at barbershops. At that point, barbers presumed to have lost more than 50% of their business. Uh, in recent years, barbers who used to shave with straight razors and would strop their razors to make them sharp, no longer do that. Uh, razors now have changeable br blades because of AIDS. If you were to cut someone with a blade, 
and retain the blade, you might transfer aid to someone else. So there have been equipment differences in barber shops. Mm -hmm. You had, uh, of course, you did the piece on Sweeney Todd. You had something in there from Cynthia McDonald, who uh, used to be on our faculty in, 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 right. in creative writing. Uh, but just before we, uh, while we still have a little time, uh, one of your favorite uh, pieces that you have in here was um, uh, the nobleman's mustache, I believe. Right. The uh, nobleman's, nobleman's mustache was written by a fellow named Isaac Monger, a Yiddish writer. And it tells the story of a nobleman who didn't like his wife, and he happened to manage her death because he was actually in love with another woman. This is a, a story in Poland. The nobleman wants to prepare himself for his wedding, and so he wants to look perfect. And he has a barber, a Jewish barber, come in who's expert to trim his mustache. The barber comes in, trims the mustache expertly, and it is perfect, perfectly symmetrical. But the count, the Polish count, feels that something's wrong with it, and so he wants the barber to cut more. The barber knows this is a mistake but he won't reject the will of the count. He cuts the mustache, and the count discovers that it is uneven. He is so angry that he has the barber taken out and lashed by his men 170 times. Now, the Bible says you're only allowed to lash someone 40 times. So this was overkill, and of course it killed the barber. The barber's wife was so angry that she cursed the count. We're not sure what, how that curse manifests itself until the wedding dinner when the Count faces his new bride and as they're about to kiss, she sees his mustache growing in front of her. He is shocked, runs out, trims his mustache and comes back with a shorter mustache and still it grows longer. His wife feels, his, for, his future wife, his betrothed, feels he is bewitched and she runs away. Pretty soon all the wedding guests flee, and the Count is left by himself to keep cutting this mustache, which grows longer and longer. Finally, it has grown so long that he has only one more thing he can do with it, and he hangs himself with his mustache. It's a remarkable story, but it deals with the oppression of the Poles of the Jews. It deals with superstition. It deals with the aristocracy and their arrogance. It has a lot of information that you can learn from it. And that's just one of how many, probably? Uh, 58. 50, 58? 58. 58. 58 stories. other stories in here. It's right. the barber in modern Jewish culture. A genre of people, places, and things with illustrations. Irving Rothman is the editor. He's been our guest today. Thank you so much for being with us, and thank you for joining us today on Graffiti. I'm John David Powell, and we'll be back next month. Thank you.